St. Edisbald. Welcome to another edition of Bands, Bikes and Bose Reviews. I have got one here from oh, this brewery. How am I going to pronounce it? De Chirurga. You know which one I mean. The Delirium Tremens Brewery. I've, honestly, I've tried to look up. I need to speak to somebody Flemish who can tell me for definite how to pronounce that. Anyway, I've got one here called St. Edisbald. And there's an immediate alarm bell ringing here. And it's got say, it's called Coxide written on it. Coxide. I'm a fucking five-year-old kid in my head, but it's, um, I think it's pronounced Coxida, which is actually, and St. Edith's border is as well, it's a region in West Flanders, and it's right on the coast. And I've ridden through there on my bike, and I do remember it being very, very sandy. And I was doing about 70 or 80, and the sand was just getting in everywhere. And when I parked the bike up, kept put the stand down, I, I took my jacket off and a load of sand just fell out. Honestly, it was uh, September, we did a tour over Europe somewhere. And there is a wind that blows from the North Sea. And there's a beach there as well, very nice beach by the looks of things. But it just blows sand straight in. It's all right if you're in a car, if you're on a motorbike, you're just gonna cop the whole lot, and we did. So that's why how I remember this place, but it looked really nice, and uh, it's they've got a picture of a monk there and all that. Usually, I would say that is bollocks, but there is actually St Edith's Bald Abbey there, and it's been there when they say anno uh, eleven thirty eight. That is actually true. There has been a monastery there, and I think it's still there. From what I can remember, it's still there. So I'm assuming that they used to brew beer, and this de Higra have taken it over and uh, they've produced this stuff now that de Riga, I've been going since 1906 so I'd imagine that this is a relatively recent acquisition but uh, it's the first one I've tried from the St Edith's Ball range they do have a few other beers as well they've got a blonde they've got the amber and they've got another one as well which for the life of me I cannot remember there's a load of stuff in Flemish on the back, which I really should fucking work out what it actually means. But if you look there, where is it? If you look there, I'll get the, I'll get the, the autofocus. It still won't fucking work. But there, you can see that that's the brewery who, who actually brew it. I don't know what that is. That mark there, it's obviously not, not a Trappist. Um, it's not a Trappist stamp, but it means something. And I should work that out, but I haven't. So that is poor on my part, and I do apologize. If I can find some information, I will put it up here now. Anyway, that's all I'm gonna say about this. Let's just investigate this beer, because I wanna try my new glass out. I got a St. Bernardus glass. It is the sort of glass you would drink that out of. So let's get it in there and see what gives. Right, first things first, there isn't a brew sheet. I can't see what they've actually put in here. All I know is it's 7%. The IBUs on this are 23, which is relatively low. That's the sort of thing I would expect a lager to be in that sort of IBU range. But yeah, it's a 330 ml bottle and it looks interesting. The sell by date is 2023. So I'm gonna assume that this is bottle fermented and the later you, you'd have drank that, the better, but I'm running low on beer in the fridge, so this is gonna get cracked open. Right, 
Right, there's the cap. It's covered in dust. They obviously don't sell a lot of this. I got this from Beers of Europe. The top of it is covered in fucking dust. Will you, would you believe that? There is, it's got a monk on the front. For once, I will give them an easy time because there is actually an abbey there. I'm assuming that the abbey used to produce beer. I could be wrong though. I got this glass from Beers of Europe today and there was a fucking cockroach in it. Well, it looked like a cockroach anyway. Uh, I cleaned it out, obviously. So let's get it in there, see what gives. Wow, that is not very clean. You did not do a good job on that. And after doing a video on glassware, you're a fucking disgrace. Oh, that smells really nice, actually. Candy sugar. A hop character coming through on that, which is interesting. A little touch of clove as well, and spice. It does smell quite interesting. Now that head on that has got a loosely packed set of bubbles on it. It's a slightly off-white head. There's the colour. They've called it an amber. That's a pretty good description of it. Yeah, there's a lot of spice. Coriander as well is coming through, so there's some little herbal notes on that. Smells typically Belgian. Let's get this down my fat Gregory Peck. Cheers. Reasonably good. Finish is quite dry. That is one thing I do notice from that. A little bit of spice on that too, like white pepper. Very similar to the yeast and the flavours that you get from a Vit beer. So I'm assuming there's some sort of orange peel or orange rind in that. I'm just going to give that a bit of a swirl, reinvigorate that head on there. Fair bit of white pepper on there too. <clears throat> I'm not getting much of the malt character, which is a first. In a blindfold test, I would say that this was more like a Vit beer. It's got the spice, it's got the orange peel, and it's got the coriander and the clove of a Vit beer. But it hasn't got the caramel malt that I would expect, or the candy sugar that I would have been expecting. Not much spirit alcohol in there either. I thought there'd be some of that too. Do you know what this reminds me of? And this is just my perception. So don't jump on me. Don't, don't jump on me for this. But if they brewed a wheat beer or a Belgian vit without the wheat, I imagine this is what it tastes like because it's got all the characteristics of a Belgian vit without the, vit, without the wheat in there. Mm. So you've got the black pepper, the coriander, the you've got the white pepper, you've got the coriander, you've got the orange zest on there, and you've got other spices as well. 
typically them Belgian yeasty esters that you get in a vit beer. Hardly any ethanol or caramel malt in that, which does make a change. This is not what I was expecting. I would be expecting a little bit more caramel malt. There's a little bit of fruit on there as well. I am getting some fruity overtones on there too. Carbonation is quite big on that as well, as you would expect. And that really does. I wouldn't say it's aggressive, but it's definitely there. And it does push them flavours around, them spicy flavours around. But I have to say, this isn't too bad. It's just fruit and spice. <clears throat> fruit is quite big now. It's, there's a little bit more sweet fruit, almost peachy. Then there's the the white pepper, the coriander, and the orange zest. It's all in there. Quite nice. Not your average Belgian. Not certainly not one that I would expect to look like that and taste how it does. But it isn't bad. There's no nasties in there, put it that way. So what's the verdict on St. Eda's Bald? Yeah, it's different, I will say that. Quite nice, no nasties. Certainly not what I was expecting. Um, yeah, I, I quite like it. Wouldn't be my first choice of beer, but it's certainly not bad. And considering it's 7%, the ethanol flavour on that is minimal. The IBUs, the 23 IBUs, that's spot on. It's not bitter at all. It's more about the spice on this one, the spice and the fruit. The caramel malt really isn't there. Not that I can discern anyway. There may be slight hints of it, but it's just overpowered by that spice and fruit. But it's quite nice. I'm gonna give it, I'm gonna give it a seven out of 10. And if you're a fan of Belgian Vit beer, you'd probably like this. As I said before, it's, it's like a Belgian Vit brewed without the wheat. Now, if you can imagine that, you're gonna get a reasonably good idea of what this is like. Maybe it's toned down on the on the real fruity esters that you get off of Vit beer yeast, but there is a lot of comparisons. It's more like a Vit than it's not. But it's quite nice. Yeah, seven out of 10, I'll recommend that. If you like Belgian Vit, then I'll definitely recommend it. So yeah, not bad. And remember, beer is working class champagne.